Hey guys, guess what day it is? This week I'm recreating Maps Path Car Journey kind of effect. Let's get started. If you're new here, my name's Arm and I make tutorials every Monday at 12 p.m. So why not hit the subscribe button and join me on a Monday? Let's jump into After Effects and import an image of a map and a car, a motorbike, a cycle, a plane, whatever you want to use for this effect. These images you can get from the internet. Here's a tip. While you search for things in Google, click on the tool button here and change the use of right to labeled for reuse. This means you can use any of these images without breaking any copyright rules. Brill. Create a new comp and place a map into this. I'm going to resize mine. Perfect. Now using the image of the car, I'm going to place it in. I need to get rid of the background here and I'm going to change the color of the car. Go. I'm going to go into Photoshop, delete the surrounding area, use hue and saturate to change the color. And save it as a PNG. Perfect. Back into After Effects. So, most people will place the car in the right place on the first frame and then move along a few frames and then hit the stopwatch button for the position to keyframe it. Move along a few frames and then change the position and rotation. Now, this isn't wrong, but there's a better way. I would start with locking both your layers down, but I still didn't do that. So, what's that saying? Do as I say, not as I do. Remember that. Select the pen tool and draw the path you'd like the car to follow. Don't close the shape, okay? Once you have the path, open up the shape layer and click on content, shape one, and finally path. We're going to copy this path. Don't worry if you can't see anything, any keyframes or anything, just stick with me. And then paste it into the position for the car layer. Boom. You should see put in some keyframes. These keyframes are from the path. This is what the car will follow. So all you really need to do now is keyframe the rotation from the first frame to the end. But you'll need to make sure you follow two things. One, move in the same direction as a car would. Because if you go the wrong way, it's really obvious you've made a mistake like this. Kind of looks cool, but it's a mistake. And two, when you're keyframing, make sure you place a keyframe in before you start turning, as the car will start turning in that direction before it should. Brill. Let's see if this works. Okay, uh, kind of, but it's way too fast. To fix this, I know I've already trimmed it, but I'm going to extend the length of the composition to 10 seconds so in the composition settings i'm going to change this from 4 to 10 and click ok click on the car layer to view the position keyframes and click on the end keyframe and i'm going to drag this all the way to the end the good thing about using this technique which you've probably already noticed is that the all the keyframes are connected so you only have to move one and the whole thing will readjust perfect but I should have really checked the duration before as I'll either have to now redo all my rotations or move them into the right place. So I'm just going to highlight them, delete them and follow the path and redo my rotation. Perfect. Annoying, but perfect. Okay, while we're doing this, did anyone notice that my battery is going down? I don't know if anyone noticed because I didn't. My battery was dying. And then my computer died and I didn't save the work and lost this all. So I had to redo it. But anyways, you're done. Once you have this technique down, you can have a play with it and use it how you like. For example, as a video for your holidays. I hope you like this video, guys. I'm thinking of breaking down a glitch effect next week. Let me know what you think via my socials or the comments below. As always, smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button.